okay let's get start today okay so <clears throat> part of this you know module okay so basically what we are going to cover uh, the infrastructure of a service as uh, in a azure sql in you know, a vm and okay so how it is you know exploring into the real time prospector okay so during the deployment uh, we can cover all this you know um, resource group resource lock and you know tags uh, even you know the subscription information and all we can you know explore it okay so so we are going to deploy in a brand new um, uh, SQL Server IaaS VM okay so uh, as you guys has requested to you know start with this you know we will you know explore it first of all okay so it is easy to digest as well why because you, you would have some sort of um, uh, experience and knowledge in this you know SQL Server prospect of right so that's what uh, it is easy to understand and more or less uh, if they want to you know move migration uh, lift and shift kind of migration process uh, uh, definitely they're going to use this infrastructure as service only so that's what you know we will you know have this one just for you know uh, deploying of the vm uh, it is you know easy to us but when you have you know licensing factor and all it is going to involve that it is going to take some sort of uh, um uh Additional steps to involving to the migration as best. Okay, so that is only the thing I want to tell. Okay, so let me start this one first of all. Okay, so <clears throat> so there is a three things we are going to involve here. Okay, so based upon I know uh, real time use cases. Okay, so though we are going to you know work on infrastructure as service, you know SQL Server IaaS VM, we have you know as per my understanding my knowledge okay so uh above uh, migrations we did okay so this infrastructure as service will comes into the scope of lift and shift migration okay okay so basically it will it will came into this uh, scope as you know uh, infrastructure as service uh, to lift and shift my for migration okay just allow me one minute Yeah, buddy. I just, you know, hold, uh, uh, I had gotten a, some emergency call. Okay. So uh, you were asking something, uh, was this Madan? Uh, yes, uh, myself, uh, actually, uh, so, uh, uh, what are the pre-checks we will consider when the database is in on-premise? So like, uh, regarding the uh, database size, compatibility, and like, uh, uh, which service is suitable, uh, for our requirement to migrate, uh, from, uh, on-premise to, uh, Azure. So what are all the considerations, what are the pre-checks regarding sizes and database compatibility and like what are the method methodologies uh, to follow before migrating from on-premise, like which, I mean, which service is suitable, like uh, how we'll uh, uh, take uh, considerations, I mean, like uh, whether Azure database service or Azure IaaS or like uh, Azure managed instance, how we will take a decision. Uh, like, uh, one question you can ask okay you are just mixing complete uh, bundle of the thing okay so taking off you know choosing of the migration path is different the discovery is a one a one phase of thing okay uh, choosing of the migration uh, strategy and all is different okay so i'm just you know giving you know high level thing we will start that one we have in a model dedicated model migration one we have a discovery path we have so which one for your question which one is the better you know migration path you are asking so that is we are not you know decision makers to the best one okay so it is a generic question you are asking okay if you go for the specific it is all about client one okay you would have to give some you know these many options we have okay so we have azure sql azure sql managed in single ton database okay and we do have serverless uh, uh, migration we have and you know sql server ias we have okay so for this third module okay so it is not a migration when we are going to considering the lift and shift migration process typically we'll follow the sql server ias we have okay so as we discussed you know uh, initial demo classes we have uh, 
two things okay so one is ayas other one is a fast one okay so in the ayas only one option you have okay so that is a infrastructure as a service so what is this infrastructure as a service how we are going to deploy let's try to understand first basic fundamental things so that will go migration migration is sixth and seventh module okay so let's try to understand the basis so that you can easily to digest the things okay so we have sql server in azure vm okay so the here we have hundreds of questions will get okay so let me explore it first of all okay we'll go for that one first thing okay use case one so normal use case will get okay so directly deployment okay so this is a one kind of thing so what it will happen okay you will get in you know, a both the licensing and it is very huge cost sql plus vm cost will come okay this is a default scenario okay so then when it is going to suit and when it is going to business use is going to help let's say client is does not have any licensing things okay so you want to run you know sql server in ias vm okay so you don't have any kind of you know licensing thing we'll go this one okay so other case is use case 2 okay so client is having the licensing first of all okay so maybe why why is having the licensing so microsoft is a flexibility if you are having the existing licenses you can utilize okay either windows license or the sql license okay let's say client is having only the sql license so what we need to we need to do we will deploy only for the vm okay so use client sql okay so here what it will happen let's say if you are going to choose this one it will comes under approximately 100 usd dollars let's say okay now this case is what it will happen okay so it will reduce 60 per 60 usd it will come okay because of sql is client is going to use so how it is going to work where it how we are going to installing how we are going to connect this is you know matter of you know one week of session actually okay again use case two use case three okay so here the both the things okay so os plus sql os plus sql so it will reduce only 30 usd okay so other thing is other thing is you have on premises okay running sql 2008 or 2022 yeah so these versions you guys is pretty much aware you know 2008 sql server and 2012 there is no longer support from the microsoft and basically okay so if if the if the licensing is not in scope of with, with respect to the windows and the sql i'm saying okay 
so it is an outdated but still microsoft is going to use possibilities of you know running your workloads okay to directly the cloud landscape lift your vm okay so you mean to i mean to say that so this kind of migrations will come basically okay we'll take the snap okay and we will run into the azure nothing it is going to change only the network layer it is going to change okay that is called as a vnet when it is going to change okay so your your workload is running as usual okay so the patching update and all some extent only it is going to use you know some extent only once after you are migrated into the cloud okay so here there is no support right why we should go for in you know, a cloud also you don't have the uh, support from the microsoft and right so why we should go here there is no support it is zero zero support but still you want to you know leverage this one if you going to move into the cloud okay uh, by changing up the network layer okay there is the extended support only for these two versions so from once after you are moving to this you know cloud okay so you can migrate you know over workloads either it is an you know uh, again vm okay so you can deploy brand new so this case okay, again you can utilize as this case or this case whatever you want to use you can utilize but if still sustain this one you can directly use this lift and shift migration kind of thing okay so this is this is typically business use case will comes into the scope okay this is just for deploy okay so next 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 thing is what it is going to happen okay so there is a the high availability things how we are going to deploy ha okay so and dr setup so if you are going to use this you know this thing okay by default microsoft is going to give just enabling of the future hadr is available so predefined hadr can available what you need to do just enable okay HA plus DR future. So how we are going to enable, how it is going to work, we'll see. Why? Because this is you know predefined settings configuration from the Microsoft. So this many options we have. So most of the real time use case most of the real time works will comes into the our scope is okay 90 percent of the things only the this is this is the only four scenarios it will come okay so this is you know when you are came the critical thing is this thing okay so you have to have to educate the client you know use case four instead of going this lift and shift and extending then you would have to take you know backups and you know move from the Azure SQL and or else you have to go uh, make this one as a in uh, upgradation in place upgradation or you know side by side migration in on premises then you can go for the Azure so there is a multiple ways actually we, we, we couple of things we did in use case okay so here then here it is going to reduce most of the use case you know you know 20 USD 30 USD it will be there okay so because of you know network layer only we are going to utilize with the extended support of the Microsoft end. So this is typically what we are going to discuss. Let's have and deploy it one infrastructure as a service in the platform as a service. Now, this aspect, do you have any, you know, questions first of all? Okay, I'm just, you know, discussing, you know, basic fundamental thing. Okay, the real-time use cases, how it is going to explore it. Okay, so when you go for this, you know, use case two, you would have to, configure and deploy the high availability concept okay so backup concept so everything you you are going to take and care okay so but it, it is in a little bit of cost of you know microsoft 10 as i suggest i'm giving 100 usd it may be 1000 usd two or two two thousand fifty thousand also it's based upon the ideal config configuration of you know existing one and the destination one so coming to the 
configuration prospect of okay so now i want to take you know configuration aspect here so how we are going to consider this one so how we are going to measure okay okay so what we are going to do basically so source and we are going to capture the data uh, <clears throat> first of all on source okay so how we are going to take the source and we have a lot of option okay so you are guys pretty much aware you can take you know just uh, you know by taking off your uh, go to log in your uh, system and take the you know uh, cpu cores okay so cpu uh, and uh, ram and uh, hardware right so hardware configuration so this is a typically we are going to take the you know, basic fundamental configuration information this is a layman kind of thing so the other aspect we have okay so how we are going to measure first of all we have one map tool is there okay Microsoft assessment and the planning tool. So this tool, what it is going to do normally, okay? It will scan your environment, okay? So capture your complete, you know, hardware and the software level, okay? So normally we'll go and we'll take it up, okay? So in addition, we'll find out, you know, uh, you know, VM and, you know, what is the soft OS, okay? So OS version and the SQL version, okay? So this is a manual process. So this is this is this is not going to work in you know, always. If if it is you know you know five to ten servers is there, okay, mostly you would have some time. Then we'll go for this option, right? This is a traditional method. So if you go for the map tool, what it is going to do? It will scan and discover your environment. Okay, so it is go. It it will scan and discover complete your on premises environment. And it will capture the, all these things. So whatever we, we just mentioned, okay, including server version, addition, what is the latest security patch updated, how many user logins, more, lot more information it is going to give. Okay. So this, this is, you know, before Azure also it is available. So now it is not in a latest thing, but uh, few of the folks it is going to use this map tool is going to help us not only the database it is in a windows windows also it is going to help linux you know os level also it is going to help okay so before azure also it is there it is you know microsoft tool which is you know free tool as well. okay so microsoft tool which is you know free tool as well so so normally how it is going to show you folks basically the map tool okay so i have a lot of uh, uh, things uh, did and a map tool okay so and again when it is going to help us normal use cases when you are going to use that you know uh, that map tool okay so why why can't you go for the uh, other tools as well okay so map uh, this is my uh, okay so it will give the output information like this but uh, my map tool uh, guidelines is uh, something it will uh, like this okay so i'm just using this one you know uh, last five to six years okay so what is the output it will come how it is going to work okay so there is a step-by-step -step document okay so we can utilize okay so if you can see this okay how it is going to work so it is going to capture okay so uh it is just for you know dot exe file you just install and give your you know on premises uh, workload information okay so the output i can show it to you okay this is for you know document how it is going to help us to give the output information no need to log in okay so not only for you know uh sql it will give all the information if you can see uh, we will going to do everything like uh, same like this. I am just exploring the part as well. Okay, how many servers? How many versions? Something like that. It is going to give you. Okay, so I'll give it to you uh, all the information. Okay, so let's say if I go for the output information. Okay, so if you can 
see this output how it is going to give us basically okay we'll do everything it is in practical i'm just giving you exploring of the option to how it is going to help us uh, when you are in a real time prospector and uh, what is the limitation also i'll tell this one okay so so that you will have you know right uh, option when you are a customer facing okay so that it is going to help you Typically, it is going to give uh, like this. Okay, so the output information is going to give all the Office 365 VM deployment and all. But when you go for the SQL, okay, let's see the SQL information. It is going to give something like this. See here, the database information, server information. Okay, so it will give some pop up of you know the web web portal and okay, so non prod. So see here, this is going to give you something like this. See, once you are going to do some assessment, how many database server, how many integration servers, analysis report and all. Let's go here. Okay, so I'm just going to give this, you know, uh, information here. Okay, the server name it will give first one and then the version the version of the service pack, enterprise, cluster or not, whether it is running or not. Uh, which is a service pack what is the directory what is the bit what is the you know uh, number of cores cpu and you know capacity also it is going to give this is what you asked right how we are going to identify source information and all so by using up this tool okay if it is in larger than you know 10 servers or you know hundreds of server if you have such kind of environment you can use this one basically so this is the output information it is going to give us okay uh so this is a one kind of tool we are going to use okay so the other thing is okay we'll go and we'll use okay so the simple aspect a dma tool data migration and assessment tool okay it is also gives a uh only this will give you know hundreds of server but this is you know uh, one by one servers we can capture it okay let's say you have a production one environment you have to do one by one okay so this is you know typically it is going to give but the advantage here the uh, it is going to give the scan and give the configuration information only okay but uh, this tool okay it will scan and discover and give the recommendation okay it will scan and discover give recommendation so what is that recommendation? Let's say your environment, on-premise environment, 2008 or 2012 is there. You want to migrate to the 2019 or 2017, whatever, okay? But uh, in the 2008, if you have any data deprecation related stuff, let's say any data types which is not compatible with SQL latest one, okay, which is going to give the you know information as well as the how you are how you are going to fix and you know optimize that one in that script also it is going to give. Okay, so this is one kind of tool which we can able to utilize, right? So the other tool is we have, okay. <clears throat> DMS tool, okay. So this tool is basically what it is going to go. It is purely migration tool. It is a purely migration tool. Last five months back. Now, this is also now it is going to give, okay. So scan and discover, okay. Scan and discover multiple, you know, database servers and all. Okay, scan and discover and also give the target environment recommendations as well. These tools is not going to get nothing. Okay, so it will 
scan and discover okay and also target environment okay so in a target environment let's say you are running a, uh, on on premises and the vm okay so it will give the recommendation like you know azure sql and uh, azure sql mi SQL Server in Azure VM. So your question, it will come here uh, you know, by using of the data uh, DMS uh, service, uh, Kiran. Okay. So the best part is here. Okay. So that's what uh, every time when we are doing migration for the discovery assessment, we'll go for the environment uh, discovery part. But migration one, we'll go, we'll use one. But uh, it is clubbed a lot of the things here. Okay. So also, let's say your on-premises configuration, something like this. On-premises configuration, something like this. Okay. 1TB database. Okay. And you have 20 core. And... 80 GB RAM. Okay. So now, when we are using this tool, what it is going to help us? Okay. Actual uses. Okay. So you have one terabyte, twenty cores, and eighty GB RAM. Even though it is the configuration of source end, but uh, ideal resource utilization not even fifty percent. Okay. So if it is in less than 50% of utilization, okay, in your on-premises, okay, based upon this, based upon the utilization, okay, so this tool is going to give the target end, okay, either these things, either the three one it is going to recommend it, okay, why, because you cannot able to go the same set of configuration one terabyte and all okay if you go for the on premises as is configuration the cost is not going to reduce it is double of the cost it is going to happen that's what what is the ideal you know utilization of the on premises based upon this you no need to calculate anything okay so it will you know going to take some sort of you know scan report in the on premises end and it will recommend you to the all these slave flavors boss if you go for you know azure sql take this configuration this is the cost okay if you go for this this configuration with the 50 percent of utilization okay so this is the configuration this is a cost and this is a car it is going to three flavor so that you can you can easily to give the cost information as well to the client and give this you know options so what is the best suit okay in this one azure sql azure sql managed instance sql server iacm so each and every flavor is having own limitations and the futures as well as the you know best high availability things here okay so see client is talking about is a non non prod environment so if you are going to do some all this these two definitely it is going to cost is going to increase right so in non prod environment you can, you have to explore it to the client end boss this is what we have the future whether it is flexible or not so when you are going to take the decision basically okay once after the your discovery assessment is going to happen okay let's say there is no db mail configuration there is no job job configuration there is no availability there is no linked server if that is the such case even though this you know hundreds of terabytes of data you will good to go and configure it here you should, you know confidently say to the client boss since there is no dependency with your on premises and this is the best suit and the cost is this comparing to your on premises it may work your environments so let's start your poc okay let's start your poc environment so that uh, you will get to know any challenges is there once everything is got implemented to the POC end, you'll better to go for a you know non-prod. There end-to-end -end testing it is going to happen. 
then everything is good you know so that you can plan into the migration process and so it it is all about you know each and in you know, every component we just need to considering and have you know step by step process and you just need to plan accordingly so this is what it is going to happen okay so the other option we have you know we will use for you know normal process backup and restore so this is the best option we are you know always using you know most of the you know on premises uh, uh, migration process okay so this is a one kind of migration process so you can use this 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 option as well okay so there is a one more option we have export import option okay okay so this is a one one kind of approach okay and as i said you know azure you know link services manage sql mi uh, link service okay so so this is also one kind of approach so there there is a lot of you know options we have i know expo while well, we are going to do migration but the thing is that you know make sure that this business use goes with respect to infrastructure service and try to deploy and use this one okay now if you have any questions just you know open up if it is in covering with this one i'll you know explain it or else we'll start the deployment first of all so that we'll get you know one by one you know now first we'll start and deploy so that you can get to know all the questions <clears throat> Yeah, uh, Beam actually, if there is a uh, 800 MB of OLTP database in on-premise environment, then which service is the uh, like a uh, like a uh, uh, like which is the best option uh, like to migrate uh, like to cloud environment like uh, th that 800 MB OLTP database uh, using for reporting purpose. So which which is the best one? Uh, like you have mentioned one TB uh, database, right? So that is the reason I'm asking this one. See, we can directly use for you know Azure SQL one scope is there. Okay, SQL Server in Azure VM we can use okay so this will take the cost of around 100 usd but this will take you know nearly to the thousand usd but uh, it is having high availability configuration always an available group uh, clustering uh, like uh, here a customer asking to uh, set up uh, SQL cluster in Azure, uh, but uh, database size is 800 MB, uh, which is in on-premise. They're planning, they're uh, <clears throat> planning to migrate from on-premise to cloud environment. Uh, so high availability co concepts also required. Configuration also required. Yeah, then we'll go for you know SQL Server Oh, SQL Server in Azure VM. Yeah, thousand USD. I'm just you know a, a, approximately I'm saying okay it's based upon you know source configuration only it will go okay let's say it, you are you are talking about only for the database size what about you know RAM CPU and you know uh, the OS uh, version and uh, uh, SQL Server version whether it is standard the enterprise so standard it is going to take you know 50 to 50 USD it's all about you just need to calculate in exact metrics we cannot able to give you know just I'm giving a comparison. Okay, if you go for this one, okay, so this much variation it was going to happen. Okay. Actually, 16 GB RAM is it is. Uh, I mean, 16 GB RAM uh, with uh, uh, 500 GB. Uh, like I mean, uh, memory is 8 GB and uh, 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 server Windows Server 2019. And uh, database Microsoft SQL Server 2019, 16 GB RAM, 500 GB hard disk. It is. So what is the addition now? Uh, addition uh, as actually uh, enterprise edition only. There are then you can go and calculate in a, uh, Azure calculator, right? Just give the inputs there. 
and uh, export that you know calculate azure cost calculator and give it to him okay, okay. see for your question let's say i'll take you know other approach if does not have any high availability okay let's say for that mb database you can go on it is run it here then how we are going to configure the you know reporting so reporting we have power bi okay this is also microsoft one you can suggest this power bi application they will use we can use this one power bi kind of thing okay why they are using high availability try to understand and ask them to why you are using high availability so it is also going to give you know 100% up and time okay if you go for this why i am saying this $1000 basically you have to 